today unboxing are my purchase for Tomica Limited Vintage New March release. Quite a variety here. We have the Tomica Rama car port, which are able to hold one casting for diorama purposes. The pair of Honda NSX Type S0 in very vibrant color in lime green and orange, and also the pair of Nissan GTR Nismo 2020 model. To be very honest, I have lost count of my Nissan GTR for TLV. This is the casting that TLVN has been focusing on to milk our money. So many GTR variants has been released, it's like never ending. I can't even keep track of all my GTR, but I'm very positive I have all of them. And I'm just trying at this point to complete the GTR that seems like an infinity loop. Let's take a closer look at the Nissan GTR Nismo in silver. This is the third and fourth variant of the Nissan 2020 model. This comes in C, so this is the third variant. And even the casting itself is very familiar and very identical to the past releases. Box wise, it looks very repetitive, just like the casting. And I have to keep very close track of my collection. A collector card is also included. The details is fabulous for the front of the GTR. The GTR badge is very legible, very beautiful paint job including stunning headlights. All the details on the front are on point. My only displeasure is on the blank car plate. It should have at least the Nismo logo on it rather than just a plain white car plate. Very nice trim with a very realistic interior. Although on first look, the carbon fiber on the roof seems quite coarse. It's actually quite detailed in terms of 1 is to 64. You'll see the difference if I zoom in further. One closer look, the textures is there. I believe it's in the scale of 1 is to 64. But still, I prefer the textures from Mini GT. Very familiar and realistic real sets that rolls extremely well. The disc brake is also included for such a premium casting. Thankfully, the side mirror is already pre-installed, so no additional mounting parts. Signature GTR rear with very nice details. The spoiler is accurately aligned. And as always, the detail looks fabulous with plastic insert tail lights. As because the GTR is in silver, the marking can't really be seen. One very interesting observation is the textures of the paint are not in 1 is to 64 scale. It seems quite coarse. The pearlized finish doesn't look really fine as a 164 scale comparison. Hence, I guess there's something to improve upon here. Although the paint job is flawless, metal based with a very simple details. The GTR also includes a standard factory suspension and it rolls extremely well. Next, the fourth variant of the Nissan GTR 2020 model. Just like the silver variant GTR, the packaging is totally identical with the only difference in color. Similar collector card included. The GTR in black is a much better color, it's more stylish and looks more fierce. And just like the silver, the pearlized finish on the black is coarse. It's not really in 1 is to 64 scale, but because it's in black, you can't really see the difference. The details on the front is equally impressive as the one in silver. Apart from the blank car plate, I have no complaints on the details and specs. I'm totally happy with that. The headlights is one of the selling points. It has the same level of details, just like the rest of the GTR, very consistent. Realistic wheel sets that rolls extremely well with a disc brake. Side mirror can pre installed with equally impressive interior. The carbon fiber textures on the roof is very consistent with the rest of the TLVN release. Although the GTR is flooding for the TLVN, this is one of the better casting. Equally impressive rear, but now you can see the markings much more clearly because it's in black background. All the liveries are very legible. Together with the distinctive plastic insert tail lights, 
the painted exhaust is equally impressive, spoiler is accurately aligned, and the proportion is fantastic. In conclusion, the GTR looks premium, it's very stylish in black, metal base with very basic details, standard factory suspension, and the GTR rolls extremely well for a model car. Next, the Tomikarama car port. This is one of the smallest Tomikarama box set I ever acquired. I got this to enhance my diorama setting. Tommy Tech recently has just begun to focus on diorama settings again, including minifix. The car port includes opening and close gate and is able to accommodate 1 is to 64 scale equivalent model car from any brand. And it also includes opening gate as well. Although I know for sure they are non-functional. The car port looks very similar from the taxi stand which I acquired last month. A sturdy box is included inside the package to protect the diorama. The car port definitely has more details than the taxi stand. Just like any other Tommy tag, their product is very clean. You can further enhance the details by applying weathering treatment on the car port to make it even more realistic rather than a clean look and feel. You can go either way. Unlike the taxi stand, the car port is already pre-installed. Everything here is in ABS. There's the corrugated roof are see-through instead of opaque, just like the taxi stand. I never really observed the roof in Japan. I guess this will be very interesting. Usually they have very high maintenance. And when compared the car port to the taxi stand, they are made from different mold. However, their dimension is almost identical, if not the same. And now the question, for a car port that's close to 3000 yen, is it really worth the retail price? Although the closed gate is clean cut, there's a lot of dimension and I really love the depth. Fixing the closed gate to the car port is very simple and effortless. The opening gate comes in two components. Installation of the opening gate is identical to the closed one. You just need to remove and replace it. The Nissan GTR fits perfectly onto the car port, and not just TRVN, any premium model cars in 164 scale of equivalent are able to fit into the car port with no problem. I'm having a bit of fun here by trying to combine the car port and the taxi stand together for just a very simple comparison. And although subtle, this diorama can be critical in storytelling for your diorama setting. Next, the Honda NSX Type S0 in vibrant orange. You can see the Type S initial on the package. Very clean line art for the NSX is the 1997 version. The packaging design is very similar to the Ferrari series. And the presentation of the package looks very premium. A collector card is included with the specs written in Japanese. Just like the NA1, the lever is also included for the opening engine bay. I shall open up this time to use the default lever to lift up. Details for the NSX Type S is very similar to the previous release. The orange NSX looks clean cut with painted details on the front as well as a blank car plate. Again, the paint job looks premium with very detailed interior. Realistic wheel sets that rolls extremely well. Side mirror is included and this time I'm very disappointed because the side mirror color is different from the body color. I really wonder why. In my opinion, the side mirror looks very toyish and looks very cheap. It brings down the premiumness of the overall casting. Rear is of course a given with the signature NSX tail light. I really love the details and now for the opening engine bay. Just like the previous release, you just need the lever to slowly lift it up. I 
I'm just very impressed with TLV for replicate such fine details in the scale of 1 is to 64. And thanks to all of you, I just got the Eno version. I can't wait to open it and compare it. I know the car models are all different. It's just a comparison between the makers and I believe this will be a very interesting video. Oh my god, do you see that? The hinges came loose. I hope I never damaged the hinge, it just come loose. And upon closer inspection, everything is okay. This is just made the way it is. And now I'm thinking whether the opening engine bay is really necessary. The hinge is oversized and ugly for durability. And it just don't look great, although it serves its function. Standard suspension and a very detailed metal base, which is very impressive. And the NSX Type S is a very nice addition to my Honda collection. Lastly, the Honda NSX Type S0 in lime green. Same packaging design as the one in orange. Instruction for the opening engine bay in Japanese. Identical collector card. Wow, the paint job looks really striking and premium. I love the racing seats in the interior with a contrast in color. Painted details on the front with a blank car plate. Identical realistic wheel sets that rose extremely well. Not forgetting the terrible looking side mirror that doesn't gel with the body color and it looks really cheap. To compensate the ugly side mirror, the rear looks awesome. Really like the details for the tail light and also the exhaust. From this angle where the hinge is hidden, it looks fantastic. And you can see with a slight push, the hinge is almost coming apart. I really feel Tommy Tech should put more thoughts into this. Yes, the engine bay is very detailed. It should be shown to the world. But for feature wise, I feel it's not there yet. It's not up to perfection. And I feel that this is something that Tommy Tech can do better. I will give a very high rating for this NSX Type S, if not for the side mirror and also the hinges. In conclusion, the NSX is a great pair for NSX lovers. Although the opening engine bay seems like a bit of gimmick, it's still a very bold feature for the otherwise conservative TLVN. Stay tuned for more TLVN unboxing. And remember to subscribe to my second channel, Hot Customs Unboxing. You can refer to the link down below in my comment section for more contents. Thanks everyone. Bye.